Good morning, everybody. It's really encouraging to see so many youth, young professionals, and supporters at this Congress. I'm a registered professional forester and I've been working in the sector for about 15 years. So that puts me about to age out of the young professional uh, category. So I'm here today to share my, a little bit about my career path and the lessons I've learned so far. So although I grew up in a northern Canadian town surrounded by trees, I had no idea what forestry was. I thought that I wanted to be a wildlife biologist saving forests and trees and actually gave my dad a really hard time about cutting wood to heat our cabin, which was made out of wood. So I really didn't get the connection when I was growing up. It was by luck and circumstance that a wise professor asked me, have you ever considered a career in forestry? That professor gave me a job for the summer collecting data for someone's PhD study on bird habitat. I was so green that I showed up for our first trip out into the woods with Velcro sneakers on. <laughs> so Francis took me shopping for my first pair of work boots and got me hooked on the idea of working in the forest sector. So off I went to university to study forestry. I will say that even at that time, I still had this idea in my mind that I wanted to save forests. I didn't know quite what that meant yet, um, but as I you know, started looking for relevant summer employment, I had a really hard time. I couldn't find a job. I was limiting myself with location and what I thought I wanted to do. So after spending a summer disappointed and without forestry work, I changed my strategy. For the next summer, I applied to every single job on the job board, did many interviews, and got one offer doing hard labor, driving a giant truck in a city in a different country. It was hard, I was scared, but I needed something on my resume and I needed to prove it to myself that I was cut out for this. So after surviving that, I had something on my resume and more opportunities came forward. Still doing hard work, often in remote locations, but the lessons I learned were invaluable and it also made me realize that I needed to look outside the box that I'd created my, for myself of what I thought I wanted to do in the forest sector. So the lesson I learned was that we should apply ourselves broadly and not limit ourselves. Because once you get your foot in a door, more doors open. So once I finished school, off I went to join the workforce fully. Uh, I realized pretty quickly when I started working that I, was gross, I felt grossly unqualified. Luckily, the people that I was working with believed in myself far more than I did, and they were really happy to help me learn the real-life skills I needed. You have to do everything for the first time once. Every job I took was a giant leap for me. I started, uh, my first full-time job was writing a giant strategic forest management plan for about 250,000 hectares in Canada. Um, that was scary, but I pulled it off and moved on to another complete switch, more field-based work with hands-on forest management. And that's where I still find myself and where I felt that it clicked for me of this is, this is why I'm here. So I've changed from being someone who feels like I have to save forests by not cutting trees to being personally responsible for their sustainable management. And that fills me up every day. I have, however, um, still taken some different kinds of job opportunities that forced me to face my fear of public speaking and being in front of a camera. So with every one of these challenges that I've accepted, it's forced me to grow. And I think we all need to do that. Make room to grow. We're all busy, but we should try to do something that scares us often. I've been extremely lucky throughout my career to have many amazing mentors. The people on this screen have helped me get to where I am today and I still thank them every time I see them. So if you're in need of a mentor, here's a hint. Just ask someone. 
chances are they won't say no, especially if you've proven yourself to be someone who's invested in your career and realize that you have a lot to learn from other people. And if you're in a position to be a mentor, that's the greatest gift you can give. Share your experience, take a chance on the underdog, and help someone gain their skills and confidence. That means you can be partially successful, sorry, partially responsible for someone else's success. There are some things that can't be learned from a book, so definitely share your experience. The next lesson I learned was about the power of community. In 2015, my friend Jessica Kaknavicious and I started what we called at the time a rebuttal to the old boys club. We became friends because we were often among the only women at forestry events. So we set out to start an informal network for women who work in, with, and for the woods. We launched a website, blog, gave presentations, wrote articles, had events, all with the goal of encouraging women to pursue a career in the forest sector and helping women in woods succeed in their careers. We're now joined by more than 2,500 women all across the world. So why was Women in Wood necessary? Well, it turns out that as of 2015, only 17% of Canada's forest sector is made up of women. It turns out that if you can see it, you can be it. It's important to show a diversity of people doing a variety of jobs. Otherwise, it's hard to see yourself in that position. When we ask women in the group what they like about it, they say that they value the relationships they've built. They feel empowered by seeing women doing jobs that they haven't before seen women doing. And also, they're gaining confidence through the sharing of information, advice, and career opportunities. So we hope that the next time that that percentage is measured, there will be a much higher representation of women in the sector because there are increasing numbers of conversations about equity in the workforce. Something that's served me well is saying yes to opportunity. I call this my yes map. So four years ago, I hadn't left North America, basically. Um, you never know what's gonna come your way. So I would encourage you to say yes to opportunity. And that might be small, like, would you give a presentation to my grade two class about forestry? You're busy, I get that. But you have to make time to expand your skill set. For example, saying yes to being a very small part in a local film project about forestry led me to an international opportunity that enabled me to visit many countries. Obviously, I was scared to do that, <laughs> but it forced me to grow, and it also forced me to look outside my sector and how my skills are applicable elsewhere, too. So you really never know what lies ahead. So I encourage everyone in this room to consider if there's something on this to-do list that you can implement yourself. Can you ask a young person if they've considered a career in forestry? Without that person, I would not be here today. So you can do that for someone else. Can you look outside the box that you've created for yourself of what you expect in your career? Can you accept challenges at every stage and also elevate people within your office and network to have the opportunity to be challenged? Can you get a mentor or be a mentor? Can you find your community, or if it doesn't exist, build one? And always try to say yes to opportunity. Thank you.